This is a lecture from Open Tuition. This is a brief revision lecture on economic value added, a topic in the advanced performance management syllabus. First of all, the overall shape of the calculation. EVA is no pat the net operating profit after tax, minus a charge at the weighted average cost of capital for the use of capital. So no pat net operating profit after tax. This means it is before interest, but after tax. That is not a figure which will appear naturally in any sort of uh, income statement or profit and loss account because it goes uh, operating profit, interest, profit after tax, tax, then the retained profits or the profits available for dividends. So no pad has to be normally specially calculated so that it is before interest but after tax. And then the charge at uh, for, uh, using the weighted average cost of capital rate for the use of capital. In, in other words, after you've made your, your no pat, if you had to pay for the capital, would you still be in the clear? Or would you essentially be making a negative uh, economic value added? Or would you be making a kind of positive figure? In other words, you, you are doing well enough to stay in front of the charge for the capital, for the use of that capital. Almost certainly the single most common error uh, comes when we look to see this charge for the use of capital. It is the opening capital, in other words, as at the start of the year in question. It has to be the opening capital employed at the start of the year in question. So, Let's see a simple example. Here we have two years. Uh, uh, 2x1 is, is kind of two years ago, if you like. 2x2 is a year just finished. Where well, they both have a year, you know, year ends at the 31st of December. We have the uh, profit before interest in tax. That's kind of the operating profit. Then we have uh, interest, which has been charged. Uh, that will give us the uh, profit before tax, uh, when you take that interest off. Then we're taking tax at 25% uh, in both cases. Uh, that will give us the profit after tax. Uh, and then we may go on to dividends. I think uh, if we look at the capital employed, uh, at the end of 19x1, we have 9,200. Uh, at uh, 19x2, we have uh, 10,000. There's an increase in capital employed of 800. The profit after tax is 990. So out of that profit after tax of 990, there must have been, I suppose, 190, uh, probably, assuming no, assuming no, no, no repayments of share capital and so on, there must have been uh, probably dividends of 190 paid. So we just get the, the 800 in there. And what we want to work out is the economic uh, uh, value added in a very simple example uh, for 2x2. And the first thing we have to do is to work out the no pat for the year and the 31st of December, 2x2. And we can, in general, you can start in two, two different places. We can take the profit before interest in tax, 2000. We completely ignore the interest and say, if you simply had to pay uh, tax on that at 25%, uh, that would be 500 of tax. You'd be left with net operating profit after tax of 1500, completely ignoring the interest. The other way we can uh, uh, do it is to start at the profit after tax figure of 1350 and gradually work backwards. So if we start uh, there, we start with the profit after tax of 1350. We want it before interest because it's a net operating profit. So we add back 
the interest of 200. But then we have to take into account, and again, this is something that, that, that people often get a bit confused with. If you add back the interest, uh, you're increasing the profit, you're increasing the tax. So you add back the interest, but you have to take a hit on tax uh, because you're not deducting uh, the interest, which of course is allowable for tax. So it's not all made money. You never really paid 200 interest to start with. You paid 200 interest, less the tax relief on it. And if you're removing interest, you have to play fair. If you're adding interest back, essentially you have to adjust also for the extra tax that would be paid if that interest weren't taken into account. So we have to deduct from that the uh, tax relief on the interest uh, that's no longer going to be found, no longer going to be enjoyed. Either way, we come to 1500 NOPAT. Oops. Uh, either way, we come to 1500 NOPAT. Uh, and the next step is to say, right, what is the economic value added? It is NOPAT minus the weighted average cost of capital applied to the capital employed, but that capital employed is at the start of 2x2. In other words, it's a capital employed at the end of 2x1. It is the 9,200 that's going to be in there. So the WAC is up here at 10%. 10% times that will be 920 taken off this, and that's going to leave us there with 580 as the economic value added, a nice positive figure, using the capital costs us 920, we've made 1500, we're ahead of the game in there by 580, that is the economic value added. Now you know you're not going to get a, a question quite as simple as this, uh, and almost always the other complications come uh, because the the profits as displayed for financial reporting purposes are not the same as the profits which are taken for economic value added purposes. Uh, for example, uh, if we want to replace the book depreciation with what they call economic depreciation. Uh, it will recognize that by and large research and development expenditure should not be expensed, but the research and development expenditure should for these purposes be regarded as an investment, should be capitalized and then amortized. And marketing expenditure to do with building the brand is a long-term type of investment, which is in the nature of capital, uh, should be uh, uh, capitalized rather than expensed. And there are certain other expenses like non-cash expenses, uh, which are too easy to manipulate, if you like. Uh, an awful lot of EVA looks at cash movements uh, rather than you know, general bad debts or some sort of rather arbitrary book depreciation. And we have to be careful to uh, change both the notepad figure uh, and also, very often, the capital employed figure. And we have to do it consistently. And I'm just going to do a very simple example uh, to, to show this. And as a matter of being consistent between what you do to profits and what you do to capital employed. So here we have a, a very slightly more complicated example uh, with one set of adjustments that needs, needs to be done and that is research and development expenditure. Here we can see there are three lots of research and development expenditure. Uh, first of all, two years ago, 40 was expensed. Uh, last year, 50 was expensed. 60 was then expensed this year. These three lots, instead of being expensed, are for the purposes of EVA and should have been capitalized. You're trying to run the clock back and say, from when this started, these should never have been written off. They should have been 
capitalized and then amortized over the 10 years. This is the, the better way that EVA says to work out what your profit before interest and tax is or your notepad is going to be. So let's look at what the uh, notepad would be now for 20x2. The easy way of doing it is to say, well, as it stands, the profit before interest is 2000. And then uh, we don't, don't do anything with the, the interest. We want before interest. We said the way it used to be done is we would take off the tax on that. That's 25% of 200. But now we're saying, instead of uh, it, it, it expensing the, 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 the 60 in here, which is this year's R&D, it should have been capitalized. Don't worry about the tax. Uh, I mean, the inland revenue doesn't know about this calculation we're doing. So far as inland revenue is concerned, 2000 was the, the, the profit on which it should be levying tax. This is a side adjustment. We don't need to worry about any tax effects on it. They won't exist. So instead of writing off 60 against profits of this year, we should have capitalized it. However, to play fair, we have got the research and development asset on which we spent a cost of 40 and then 50 and then 60. The cost of that research and development asset at the end of 2x2 would have been 150. And that would all be capitalized. And and that all has to be then amortized during 2x2 at 10%. So you capitalize and you amortize. It is consistent between the adjustments we're making on this year's profit and the adjustments we, we we're having to do uh, for you know, not to expense this year's R&D, but also to amortize this year and previous year's capitalized research and development expenditure. So we need to take 10% in here of the 40, the 50, the 60, 15 of it. The no pad now comes to 1545. Add back this year's charge, take off all the amortization we should be doing uh, for this year's amortization on the capitalized R&D to date. Then we have to look at, well, what would the capital employed be at the start of 2x2? In other words, at the end of 2x1. Think about it. At the end of 2x1, we would have capitalized both this 40 and then this 50, but then we would have depreciated, amortized them. We would have amortized this by two years, x0 and x1, and we've amortized this by one year. So we have to be careful, consistent, to construct what the capital employed would be if we'd always been capitalizing this research and development expenditure. So the capital employed at the end of 2x1, in other words, the start of this period, would have been the 9,200. That would have been 40 and 50 greater because that should have been in profits uh, and, and, and capitalized in other words. But then we have to take off R, but the 40 would have been written down by two years worth of 10%. And the uh, this amount here would have been written down by one year at 50%. It would have been amortized during 2x1. So now the capital employed at the end of the year uh, comes to 9277. That's the beginning of 2x2. So we had 9277. That was a capital available to us at a cost of 10%, with which we managed to make 1545 as no pad. So now, uh, 1545. So now the EVA is 1545 uh, minus, uh, that should be, I think, in here. Uh, seven seven in in that 
So it's going to be 1545 minus 9 to 7.7, uh, 617.3. This one should be, sorry, I made an error in that. 617.3. So, two things to remember. Capital employed at the start of the period you're doing it for. And when you're making adjustments, think what effect these adjustments will have on this year's NOPAT and on the brought forward capital employed. Be consistent.